Hi everyone, here at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum during Ozama Fest 2024, and we're taking a look at an example of one of the Soviet tanks that's in the museum's inventory from early in World War II. This is the T-3476. Now, I previously did a video on a later model of the T-34, the T-3485, that sported a 85mm main gun. This is the earlier version and um, is from the model year of 1941, and I'll get into um, some of the features that distinguish the 1941 model year of the T-34 as we uh, uh, start talking about it. Now, when Germany la launched its invasion of uh, the Soviet Union in uh, June 1941, Operation Barbarossa, by some estimates, the Soviets had around 24,000 tanks in their inventory. A lot of them were um, uh, in poor shape, a lot of them were obsolescent, and a lot of them were made up by um, the, the so-called BT-5 and BT-7 models, as well as the slower T T-26. So the Soviets had a lot of tanks, but in general, the quality of them was considered um, um, fairly low. Um, they were relatively lightly armoured, only 13 to 15 millimetres of, uh, of, of steel, and they were vulnerable to the widely deployed 3.7 centimetre anti-tank guns that the Germans had on their armoured vehicles and also in their, their, their towed anti-tank units. And most of these Soviet tanks were destroyed in the first months of the war. Within the Soviet army, however, were more modern and capable tank designs, such as the T-34. The T-34 was was in the Soviet inventory um, in June 1941, and there were about a thousand um, uh, deployed on the day that the, uh, the, the, the Germans invaded. And there was also even 500 KV tanks available at the start of Operation Barbarossa. Now, development of the T-34 goes back to 1937 when the Red Army assigned engineer Mikhail Koshkin to lead a team to design a replacement for the BT tanks. These were the Soviets' um, gun tanks. They had to be fast-moving vehicles that were designed to engage enemy, enemy armour cause breakthroughs and then move into enemy's rear areas and, um, and break up their supply line. So these were the tanks that were going to be used to, um, to, to head assaults. Now this first prototype designated the A20 was specified with 20 millimeters of armor and a 45 millimeter um, gun. As time went on, they, they felt that there was a need for more armor and uh, a more capable gun. However, one thing that was carried over from the early designs is the suspension that you see here. This is a so-called um, uh, Walter Christie suspension or a Christie suspension. And in the case of the T-34 consists of five road wheels, double road wheels, that are mounted on swing arms that are in turn suspended by a strut with a, uh, a vertical spring. And those swing arms with the strut and the spring allow the suspension to um, have quite a lot of travel and to soak up um, relatively large, um, relatively large um, obstructions. So in that way, you've got a tank here that can deal with um, with poor terrain and also travel at relatively high speed across that poor terrain. Um, so that was a hallmark of the uh, BT tanks, and it was carried over here into the uh, into T thirty four. You can see here when you look at the tracks, there's uh, there's guide horns. Um, to keep the track um, in centered on the uh, twin road wheels. These guide horns also serve as the um, points of engagement for the rear sprocket. So we'll take a look at the rear sprocket in a minute, but there's um, features that are internal to that sprocket that engage with those horns and, um, and transmit drive from the sprocket to the, uh, to the tracks. So the T-34 has a rear mounted um, uh, V12 diesel engine which connects to the, uh, the rear uh, drive sprocket, which as you see, doesn't have any external teeth, but does have um, internal bars that uh, engage onto the, uh, the horns that are on the, uh, on the track, and that's how, how drive is achieved. So you've got this Christie suspension, very good for high speed um, off-road travel, and um, a rear engine and rear transmission and rear, uh, rear drive. Now, pre-war or pre-German invasion experience of the Soviet army against the Japanese in 1938 and 39 in Poland and against the Finns taught the Russians that their BT tanks um, were, were under-armoured and that they were under-armed. And so when it came to designing their new medium tank, the T-34, they went with 45 millimetres of frontal armour and a 76 millimetre um, main gun. Now, um, production started in uh, 1940 um, of the T-3476 and continued until 1944 when they moved over to the T-3485 model sporting the 85 millimeter um, main gun. Um, however, the uh, version that was produced in 1940 had a different 76 millimeter gun to the one that is on this version. This 1941 model had what was termed the F-34 76.2 millimeter gun. Um, which replaced the uh, F-11, which was the gun used in 19, uh, 1940. This version for 1941, the gun had about 20% better armour penetration. One of the other hallmarks of the 1941 model is um, the rather large single hatch that's in the top of the turret. You can see that if you scan, want to scan back up to the top of the turret, you'll see that it's got a single large um, hatch. 
that's used for both uh, crew members that are in the uh, turret for, for ingress and uh, egress. The turret of um, the, the T-3476 only had a two-man crew, so you've got a commander and a gunner. So the commander's doing a lot of work to service the gun, call out targets, identify the next target, command the driver. So there's a lot of load um, on the commander in this tank, and consequently the Germans often observed that the rate of fire of the T-34 was, was relatively low. You pretty much had an overloaded um, commander who was um, in charge of the tank. Now that situation was rectified with the T-3485 in 1944. The, the bigger turret and the bigger gun at that point um, afforded the uh, Russians to the opportunity to add a third crew member to the uh, to the turret and reduce some of the workload on the uh, on the commander. So back here at the uh, rear of the tank, you've got the diesel engines. As I mentioned, that's the so-called Kharkiv V2 engine, 38.8 litre V12 diesel, developing about 370 kilowatts, and also the transmissions at the back. So tank weight, combat weight of about 26 and a half tons. And so with that engine and, uh, and with the tracks and the rear drive, it could move the tank along at a top speed of about um, 50 kilometers per hour. Now for the T-34-76 models produced from 1940 to 1941, total production um, figures, there's a few different estimates out there, um, but they're in the neighborhood of 36,000 tanks, 35,500 or so. Um, and once they switched over to the T-34-85 in 1944, um, more vehicles were built for a total production of about 84,000 vehicles uh, in total, which made the T-34 the most produced tank of World War II and the second most um, produced tank in, uh, in history. Now, the 76.2mm gun that this, uh, this version sported um, uh, had a capability of penetrating about 60mm of armour at 1,000mm of range, which was enough to deal with the frontal armour of all the uh, early war Panzer III and Panzer IV tanks that the uh, Germans were employing um, uh, in the uh, early parts of the war against Russia. So it was more than capable of, uh, of dealing with that, um, that German armour if it was employed um, effectively. Uh, the tank was also armed with two 7.62mm um, DG machine guns, one mounted coaxially with the main gun and one in the, uh, in, in the hull. Um, so the T-34s were encountered on the first day of Arbor Operation Barbarossa in June 41 and they were in Berlin on the day Germany surrendered. And a lot's been written about these tanks as a wonder weapon and having amazing characteristics and there's also been a lot of detractors. It was certainly made in huge numbers and it was also destroyed in equally huge numbers um, by Axis tanks, artillery and self-propelled guns. Used extensively obviously on the Eastern Front and is justifiably remembered as a critical and potent component of the Soviet victory over um, enemy forces in World War II. So I want to thank you for uh, making it to the end of the video and listening to me bang on about the T-3476 here at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum. I look forward to talking to you soon about another armoured vehicle and until then I hope you stay well and we'll talk soon.